minds and hearts to receive the message that you've laid on my heart. In Christ's name we pray. So in today's gospel reading, Jesus has gotten up from the table and he's washed all their feet. Do you remember the time that we celebrate foot washing? Do you remember what day that is? Anybody? What day? Holy Thursday, also known as Maundy Thursday. You see, Jesus is eating supper with his friends. And he knows it's not going to be long and he's not going to be with them. And he tells them, when I leave, right, when I leave, you all need each other, each other, to make things work. And he tells them, love each other the way I have loved you. Now, I will bet that some of you have been in class before at school, and the teacher walks out the room, and there's a bunch of people that go nuts. Am I right? Am I right? It, it, it happens everywhere, right? Teacher walks out the room, they're like, ah, and start pulling things. I bet there's some of you that when your parents walk out of the room, you're like, come on. In other words, how we know that Christ is part of us is how well we love one another. And the way we love people is to obey. It's to obey. Jesus was obedient. The Father told him, I need you to do some things that are pretty hard. And Jesus said, I'll do it. Why? Because I love you, God. We do things for our parents when they ask us to. We obey because we love our parents. Correct? We love our parents. They're good to us. Come on, Ben. Your parents good to you? Dad, did you hear that? Okay, that's good. So one of the things that Jesus is saying today is that if you want to be a Christian, you need to obey and you need to love. I want all of you that when somebody is at school picking on somebody else and being a bully or talking about people, instead of going, yeah, they're like that, I really can't stand her pigtails and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you walk up and say, come on, I want to be your friend. Why? Because Jesus calls us to be those friends. The world can be mean. There's mean people at school. Have you seen them? They're mean. Are they mean, Taylor? To you? As perfect as you are? Oh my goodness, they're really mean then. But people can be mean, right, Taylor? They can be mean. Right? We don't want to be mean with them. When you see people being picked on, you come to their aid. You come to them and say to the other people, leave that person alone. That's my friend. Because Jesus has called me to love everybody, even the people that look a little odd. Even the people that might be a different color than we are. You see, Jesus is telling us today that we need to be people of love. There's a really pretty passage I want to read to you all. It's usually read at a wedding. But it's a passage that Paul wrote to describe to people what love is. What love is. Listen to these words. Love is patient. What's patient mean? What does it mean to be patient? What does it mean to be Be waiting, be a normal person instead of freaking out and I agree. That's definitely patient. By the way, adults, some of us need to be patient drivers. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Love is patient. Love is kind. Kind. What does it mean to be kind, Taylor? Yeah, be 
be kind. That's a very pretty dress you have on today. I really like your shoes. Right? Those people should not have been calling you those names. Come sit with me at the lunch table. That's being kind. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is that envious or boastful. Do you know what it means to be envious? What's it mean, Jack? Um, to envy somebody. What does it mean to envy? What? Or what? what they have. Have you ever met somebody that when they got something, people are jealous? They're jealous. Right? Love is not being jealous. Love is that when Oliver gets something, Sam goes, I'm very happy that you got that, Oliver. I know Sam would do that, because he's just that kind of guy, right, Dad? He's that kind of guy. Right? We don't, we don't tear other people down to make us feel better. By the way, this is a sermon for adults, too. Amen? Amen. The whole world, it seems to be insane now. Love's not irritable. How many of you are irritable in the morning? Uh, I think so. Betsy, put your hand down. You're a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard sometimes. I don't know where my little Scarlet Rose is, but she's the worst person in the morning. <laughs> oh, man. I, said, I told her one time, I said, Scarlet, you choose to be grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. You need to be happy, happy, happy. Well, that worked really well at 3 o'clock in the morning when she came in and woke me up and said, I'm happy, happy, happy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. <laughs> Irritable. We walk out the door every day going to school. And parents and adults, we walk out the door every day going to work, going to the grocery store. We carry the marks of Christ with us. There's no excuse for us to be grumpy or irritable. How is somebody going to see the love of God in us if we're irritable and grumpy? Amen? It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. How many of you all have been in class and seen somebody throw a spitball and went, ah! <laughs> Or see somebody do something mean to somebody? Yeah, you didn't throw it, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Well, people that read, all those people that are laughing and jumping down are rejoicing in wrongdoing. Do we do that? No. By the way, adults, when people get in trouble with the law, it's time to pray for them. You hear what I'm saying? Instead of rejoicing, oh, they got that one. Finally. Love rejoices in the truth. In other words, to be marks of Jesus' people, we need to be truth tellers. Who threw that ball? I did. Yeah, I've been bad before. Today. Trust me. <laughs> Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is an irritable. It doesn't rejoice in its own way. It's not boastful. Today's gospel is calling us to love one another. By that, by that, by loving one another, the whole world will know that we are Jesus. Does that make sense? The whole world will know that we belong to Christ. By the way, adults, if you define what you love as opposite of what you hate, you better look in the mirror. I'm going to say that again. The world out there defines love as what they don't hate. That's not love. Right? You are called to love your enemies, even the ones you disagree with. In fact, you probably have to love them harder. The ones that you disagree with. Right? Because we need the Holy Spirit to do that. Jesus has been teaching us, your teachers have been teaching you all year how to be, be Christ-like. Remember this lesson this summer. When you have a chance to act kind, act kind. When you have a chance to give somebody a helping hand when they fall down, do that. 
Saints of God, when you see people in need, help them. Help them. Why? Because Christ has called us to love one another. How many of you don't know Miss Jean Beers? Do you know Miss Jean? Miss Jean called me yesterday crying because her son died. And she called me. Why? Because she knew that I loved her. Right? Because that's what we do. We reach out our hands to people that are in need and tell them that we love each other. How many of you have had a pet that died? Any of you? That's really hard, isn't it? I miss my dog. Right? It made me, it made me feel really good when other people came up and said to me, I'm really sorry, Father Mike, about your dog. Why? Because that's compassion. That's love. May the Holy Spirit move in all your hearts. Boy, I see it moving in all of you. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm proud of the year you've had. I'm proud of how reverent you are in church. I'm proud of all the stuff you've done. But remember that God has called us to love. And may we be the best at that that we could ever be. Amen. Amen.